Painkillers seem like they came straight out of Hogwarts, but it's not magic. It used to be believed that pain was caused by, you won't believe it, demons and ghosts that entered your body through orifices. That's why they tried to get those ghosts out or plug your holes. Not cool. Fortunately, scientists discovered the substances that made this miracle happen, and now we have a pill for practically every type of pain, from when you hit your pinky on the bed to when your whole body hurts. And they found several ways to get them into your body, through injections, patches, ointments, suppositories, ouch, and ew, and the most common, pills. When you take a pill, it reaches your stomach, dissolves with the stomach acids, then travels to the intestine, and through its walls, it enters the bloodstream. From there, they hop on one of your body's highways that carry the painkillers to the liver. Express delivery. The liver is like the stubborn bouncer at the door of a Hollywood party. It lets some pass and sends others home. In this case, it sends some active substances of painkillers on a tour around the body and kicks others out of the system. The ones that don't make it past this bouncer are metabolized, which means they're transformed by liver enzymes into useless substances and expelled from the body by sending them to the kidneys and then to the urine. But the other painkiller molecules that manage to pass through travel along the body's Route 66, the circulatory system, until they reach their destination, which could be a twisted foot, the head, or the tooth receptors. This highway runs throughout the body and passes through the liver again, which, besides being a good bouncer, works all the time, repeating the entire cycle once every minute. Maybe we were too hard on it. Sorry, Livy. On this body tour, painkillers travel up and down, searching for something. Just like us on this tour we call life. But painkillers are trained to bind to a kind of molecule that the body generates when there's pain. And when the painkillers find them, they pounce on them and start blocking their production. So the body stops receiving these signals with pain written all over them. Thus, the brain stops perceiving pain as long as the active substance from painkillers are there, getting in the way. Okay, maybe one could do the math and think more painkillers, less pain, but it doesn't work like that. If the dose is too low, the liver metabolizes them faster, and if the dose is too high, they can be toxic and contaminate your precious body. That's why you gotta listen to the doctor, capiche? It would save us many headaches and help us keep creating videos like these if you hit the subscribe button. Come on, do it. I promise it doesn't hurt. The doses also depend on each person's body, sex, age, and many other factors, but there's always one that blows our minds. Why do some people feel less pain than others? Pain. It's a signal the brain uses to let you know something's wrong, like the signs your ex sent you that you never saw. There are pain detectors literally everywhere called nociceptors, and they alert the brain when there's something that could harm you. So, when these detectors notice that something is crossing the line, they tell the brain there's a security breach. They're like the police officers patrolling the streets. But just as some cities have stricter rules than others, there are variations in pain tolerance among people. Moreover, this threshold can be affected by the constant use of painkillers. But there are some really strong painkillers that work better than others. They can be produced in two ways those that come from powerful plants, and those that are a mix of natural and synthetic substances to increase their effectiveness, like when King Kong had a robot hand, remember? These are used for more intense pain, but they're also more dangerous since they directly affect the brain. Instead of going to the parts closest to the source of the pain, powerful painkillers mess with the brain, causing a general feeling of calm that the brain loves. It's like eating chocolate, but raised to the power of thousands. That's why they become so addictive and why they're very dangerous. Scientists are looking for new ways to deal with pain without relying on these dangerous substances. And some have found a light at the end of the tunnel in laboratory-designed antibodies. Although their research is just the beginning, it's been found that some artificially created proteins have proven to be very effective in treating pain, and their use has already been approved in some people. On the other hand, some French scientists have found good results using snake venom to treat pain. What would Harry Potter say? Snakes are not to be trusted. But not in this case. These scientists have discovered that the venom of snakes like the black mamba could be very effective without some side effects. The snake uses neurotoxins that paralyze its prey, more effective than when your mom enters your room or when your ex enters the chat. Scientists have tested this venom on mice and found it to be more effective than most potent painkillers. Who would have thought those lessons on speaking the language of snakes would have any use? 
long live the House of Slytherin. But until that time comes, follow your doctor's recommendations about using pain relievers. Remember, feeling a little pain is good. It means that you're alive.